Cassie filed the lawsuit against Diddy, and it, it it was a snowball effect. And a lot of people didn't understand that Diddy, the reason he settled it so fast, he had no choice but to settle it. He was an individual defendant in those other it, those are companies and those are entities. And Cassie filed a lawsuit against him as a former employer. Okay, you see things happening into uh, rich white people like Les Moonves. Former employees are filing lawsuits. And next thing you know, they got to sell their stocks and get out of the country. Conti, country, but get out of the company simply because of insurance policies and insurance things that kick in behind the scene. So a lot of people took it, well, did he settle it in 24 hours? You know, a dumb nigga that don't understand law, that don't understand insurance policy. Oh, he did it. And I was like, he did it. Uh-huh. Because them clicks and views show going, did it, nigga. You was the clown of YouTube. You was a clown-ass rapper, did it. And we going to roast and gag you forever and ever, okay? People ain't going to get tired of getting clicks and views roasting your goddamn ass. So I'm going to go with the majority. You did it, nigga. You settled that lawsuit. You ain't want to fight. Even though no white people made you settle, and Lucy and Gree Edge and all of them getting away from you. Eddie Griffin coming out talking about you when that nigga sat down and ate a whole glob of mayonnaise that was symbolic for a glob of white people. Look! And he said, scrumptious. And when he did, that nigga stopped fucking with him. So ain't no need for him coming out. Maybe he could eat some mayonnaise <laughs> on a Reuben and a bologna because have it told, if you do your research, they say every time a nigga eats some mayonnaise on a piece of white bread, you die. And Clive Davis is on his way out the door. And we got, you know, Cassie. So a lot of people was like, maybe she's lying. Maybe she's, you know, clout chasing. It's too late. She should have been did it. You know who I say that about? I say that about Aubrey O'Day. I'm sick of Aubrey O'Day, y'all. I swear to God, I'm sick of her. Okay, Aubrey O'Day, she wants the clout. Okay, Aubrey O'Day is giving me Jaguar right vibes. Okay, just because she white don't mean we don't get to call her crazy and cuckoo in a white version of Jaguar right. Or is that Salone Bell on YouTube talking about she a psychic? Either way, both of them are acting a fool and acting like they're just going to hold on to whatever tea they have to get as much clout as they want. Arby, we tired of looking at them botched pictures. Whoever molded you, you need to go back in there. You look like David Gutter molded you in that music video him and Nicki Minaj did. Turn me on. No, no, turn me on. Anyways, Arby said, just to be clear, my long-term ex, Donald Trump Jr., look at her trying to get clout off of Donald Trump Jr. nuts when he sat up there and act like him and DJ Academics had a jerk fist. Pretending to smoke a cigar and the cigar ain't even went down after two hours of interview. But anyways, he went on academics to discuss my ex-boss Diddy and the conspiracies behind Kim Porter's death. I keep telling you all, I am in the center of really knowing all the information and always have been. I'm out to be Arby O'Day and a shit out of this everyone playing games right now. Y'all think this Kendrick and Drake it is cute. Just wait because the exposed haven't even started. Let's count the names and let's count the clout that she won't offer these people. Donald Trump Jr. probably got searched mm, uh, over a million times this week. DJ Academics, live stream. Um, he got a big platform, you know, Arbor and suck black penis. So, you know, niggas gonna accept that Kim Porter. That's three names she gripping off of Diddy, four names, uh, Drake, Kendrick Lamar, people that ain't even never even have a motherfucking conversation with you, girl. Now you wanna sit down on a blue couch at Real Life Street Star with their lying ass, or you wanna go on Vlad TV, Adam 22. And why you ain't make a, gay, a sex tape with Adam 22? So he ain't hunched down that little 19 year old boy, and you did an interview with him, and ain't nobody still watching. Ain't nobody interested in you, Arbery. You're not no motherfucking victim. you the same person that I say you one of the ones that make the water murky. And it's too murky. And we say, if you got some tea, go ahead and spill it. Otherwise, bye. Somebody sent me a, a, a link to where she said, ask me any question for $50. I, I, I might as well do that. And if she don't answer my question, bitch, I'm going to drag you for fill. You ain't got no motherfucking tea. You, you voluntarily did whatever you did for that goddamn contract. You mad because you done sold your soul and it ain't worth shit. And that nigga gave you a cease and desist notification. That was telling. Oh, be quiet. Now you using that to clout chase. And I can get your girl to TV. I ain't going to lie. She probably is the sexiest performer. I don't know, Arbor, if this is going to end up in where you end up on the stage performing Live Nation, whether you want to go in tech or whatever. But this you, this ain't for you, okay, girl? The way you look, all that surgery you done got and shit like that, you coming out here trying to be the new Jaguar, right? Girl, they really gonna, you really going to jump off a bridge how much niggas going to harass you. But let I don't know. She white, so they might let her get away with it for about 10 years playing and trolling and shit like that. Get the fuck up out of here. We don't care. You know, you big got a BBL. You had big hair and a BBL. Diddy probably did get with you because you know Diddy like him thick. He want all that ass, that ass, that ass, that ass, okay? Cat Williams been and told it that Diddy had to smash uh, Professor Overbean a long time ago. And niggas one even woke up and thought it was comedy when this nigga was telling the truth. <laughs>
Motherfuckers be gay in Hollywood. You never <laughs> fucking expected. They be having these big ass mansion parties, and the mansion party, the whole mansion is a party, and then it's a separate party in the little rooms. I ain't been famous that goddamn long. I'm excited than a motherfucker to be at the mansion party. You be looking in all the goddamn rooms, and you fuck around and look in the wrong room and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, come here, come here. <laughs> Is that two niggas kissing? <laughs> Is one of them niggas Professor Obi? Uh, oh! <laughs> he came out the closet. He came out the closet. Oh! So a lot of people didn't understand the metaphor. He started saying R. Kelly, he came out the closet. At that time, R. Kelly and Diddy was making a lot of music and Jay-Z as well. So uh, people indicated that Professor Overbeam was either kissing Jay-Z or Diddy. And the only reason I say maybe um, it was Diddy, because, you know, Jay-Z got them big, soup cooler looks, and so do Professor Overbeam with his tight pair of weird ass. And we know that Monique loved Professor Overbeam. Shit. She didn't care because he was gay. Look what Monique got right now, Sidney Hicks. Who been chasing out the Tyler Perry asshole and they got all that ass. They need all that ass. Did it like them thick too? If did it hit Professor Overbeam, don't sit up here and say did it ain't hit Carl Winslow from Family Guy. Okay. I don't speak ill of the dead, but I'm going to tell you the business now. These niggas say that did it even hit uh, motherfucking uh, Uncle Phil from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. With all that ass, all that ass. The way Diddy like these motherfuckers thick and good shit. Okay, Diddy gonna need a kickstand to get up in that motherfucking ass. <laughs> to stick his mouth around that big ass pussy and wonder why T.D. Jake sent up that same why. Have you ever been swallowed up and Diddy sitting up with his head on a T.D. Jake looking like sugar bear? Diddy been all up in that ass, that ass, that ass the same way he did Professor Overbeam, Uncle Phil, Carl Winslow, and motherfucking T.D. Jake, bitch. Uh, I mean, 600, I know you get... You presented the paperwork, right? If you see the paperwork with Diddy, right? You see, like, all the shit that is is coming out. Because I used to go to Diddy parties and shit. stuff like that. But I'm how, how, <laughs> speak shit. on that real quick. No, oh, no. he's seen some how, things, yeah, baby. Some tell shit, him. Some, some yeah, crazy no, shit. I don't give a shit. Tell him. No, but, like, I see, like, when Diddy fucked Carl Winslow. We was at the party. Uh-huh. And, you know, we just chilling and shit like that. And me, he messed up my and, childhood and, when he told me and, that. Everybody know me, right? Right. I'm a I'm a goofy oh, nigga. I'm funny and stuff like yeah. that. So I hear a nigga just wearing out some shit. I'm like, mm. ah. like hearing that, I'm like, on six oh, who's wearing this bitch out? Right. Nigga, I kick in the door. Poof. Kick in the door. Nigga, I seen. I looked. I seen Carl Winslow. Put yeah, his that's head the father. Up. Ain't that the father from oh, like, from Family Matters? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No Carl way. Winslow. Un oh, un oh, the dad. The dad. <laughs> oh, the dad. The dad. The dad. The dad. Mm -hmm. the God, dead homie. Neighborhood crib. So when I see, <laughs> wow. I see, I seen that. Man. And then, so who who was piping Carl? Uh, Diddy? Yeah, yes. Diddy was. Mm -mm. So when, when when I see <laughs> when I seen that, cut all right, that ass, that ass, Diddy bitch. If Diddy was hitting Carl Winslow, bitch, you wonder why he got up there and had them little motherfucking outbursts when he was mad on the show. Family Guy would he would be mad because he didn't get none of that with all that ass, that ass, bitch. Diddy need a kickstand and everything to get that fucking belly and that ass up. And I still believe it. Okay. They say William and Craig got a picture of uh, T.D. Jakes on a Harley David motorcycle with a pink thong on in the peach cobbler. And they got another one of him, it, a missionary style, with a pink thong on. And they said it had a little dookie back there. And Diddy been hitting all that ass, that ass. That nigga hit Carl Winslow the same way he hit T.D. Jakes, bitch. T.D. Jakes, you, been, you, you done did all the swallowing up. Matter of fact, I'm going to put it like this. You know, let me, let me go ahead and bring this out, okay? These niggas love telling on themselves in a symbolic way. He in the pool pit. That nigga looking at his security guard, looking at Will Smith, looking at Tyler Perry and all these niggas. In, Have you ever been swallowed up? Yeah. He's sitting in bird call telling them nigga he going to swallow him up to drop that check. And wonder why Tyler Perry went up there and dropped a million dollars. Then put his hand on T.D. Jakes. He had like he was falling out. Child, please. T.D. Jakes, mine went to the motherfucking hotel. To the motherfucking motel, bitch. <laughs> what you talking about? T.D. Jakes and Tyler Perry been screwing. That's the reason he said, have you ever been swallowed up in the church? Sending bird calls. All these niggas is gay. All along. Ain't no need to testify, T.D. Jakes. Your wife even told the truth, nigga. Your wife pretended she couldn't walk. And when that gay shit came out about you, she stood up and was moving away from you, bitch. It's like she was in a box your goddamn face. I seen that. I seen what she was doing. Shit. Your kids all fucked up. Uh, uh, what's her name? 
the big ugly one that was chasing out the Chris uh Chris Chris Cabs on Clubhouse. The big ugly, y'all know the one that's out here stealing people kids. Y'all fucked up, I'm telling you. Too much money, too much power bottles and all of this shit. All that ass, that ass, that ass, okay? Shit, your daddy fucked up with you, okay? He was hiding his gay secret from you. And wonder why you fucked up, Cora, and can't keep a man with your ugly ass. And he, he was telling me, he was like, it's nothing more enjoyable than having a man do something for somebody. Mm -mm. I'm like, cuz, that shit crazy. Oh, no. Not the red roof so here. It's like, after that, it was like, like the industry is like, Wow, you know, you know, that's wild. Is, so it's it wild. Men oh, like no. that, they that's feel they're crazy. untouchable. And the sad thing is, we know when they did the raid, they found a lot of, in, uh, like, um, hidden cameras in bedrooms. They mm. found, like, literally. First of all, this girl right here, I'm finna turn this shit out because if you go to this interview, one minute she sounds Jamaican and now she sounds like a white girl and she wanna look like fake evidence. Bye. You probably been at Diddy Party. You was talking that shit about Lumnea Palm the Mac because that man don't want you on his motherfucking TV show. But this right here is the Tourette's, the, 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 the outburst that Carl Winslow, right? As a professional actor, right? There are certain things and certain things that, certain nuances that we say and do. Like, right? If I'm joking, roasting, I will pick up a joke and I will hold on to it for a week or two, then I'll leave because some, I feel something else. But in television, whether it's, you know, the cards and dance or something that signifies this person's character. Okay, this man then woke up on the wrong side of the bed. He probably had for papas, um, big fat ass, big probably got a dick st deal though stuck in his ass. So when he sit down and go to spazzing out and moving around a little bit with that deal though, they're just drilling right there, right there, black fuck that ass. So I always felt like it was some weird, you know. Some weird with his signature trait. Like he had stuff stuck up his ass. He was just trying to get it up in there and do the wiggle and shit like they advertise that ass. Okay. Every single time I see him come on the TV show, all I can think about is Big Mama's here. Big, big mama's here. Look how big he is. Bitch. <laughs> Shy. <laughs> Look at look at look at it. Did it needed a kickstand to hold this nigga up to hold that ass up? Okay. Oh, in in other words, he was probably hitting him in the slang or something up in there. Did it was all up in there. You understand what I'm saying? This man that did family guy ain't been around, but how he meet a Diddy who's younger than him and who came way after him and he still be in the background? I tell you, just cause you don't see me in their movies or anything, don't mean I don't be up in the scenes, bitch. I'm the type of nigga to run these motherfuckers. I see them gay reptilians and I go to telling them what to do. Get your motherfucking ass back. I'll I run you. Look at it. He having a fit. He ain't getting no goddamn Peter. Look at, he even wanted Steve Urkel. Y'all ain't see Steve Urkel right there with it. They got like that doing the Michael Jackson. Yee -hee -hee. He jumping up, mad because he can't get none. Child, please. And then Eddie Winslow, he didn't got so esoteric and crazy out of his mind. Oh, I don't act. I don't feel like entertaining. I don't do. You saying that because you can't get another job. Okay, you ugly. Okay, it ain't back in the days. You got that job by proxy and chance. What did you do to get that job? What did you do for a cook and conduct bar? Mm -mm. Look, this man, I'm telling this man was performative. This man was mad. Look, he ain't want no love right there. He ain't love. He was thinking about that producer, whoever that got him that job, and going to them did it freak outs, okay? That's the only reason why he enjoyed his job. All the ketamine, pink cocaine, and shit that been going around Hollywood. He been at them Diddy parties. So I do believe Diddy hit that. I'm telling you. Diddy like a thick. Did it say it? Push it out. That bitch ain't got no motherfucking type. Him, Ashton Kutcher, Aubrey O'Day, Donny Clan, Jeremy Green, all them motherfuckers. Did it ain't got no type, okay? Or else he just so used to fucking them executives, them big motherfuckers, and get paid, getting that motherfucker be out of contract. He just don't care. He get on that pink cocaine, somebody can stick hot curlers down his ass and tell him to clinch, and he ain't gonna feel nothing. Just like the Rod didn't feel nothing when he was slipped that goddamn pink cocaine and mad because that man to fight the lawsuit against your goddamn ass. Did he? Did he do it? Did he do it? Yes, he did it. I think he did it. Okay, so did he? Uh, should be expected in raid another raid, and they go rain on his parade. Cause I done told y'all, Quincy Brown is snitching on him with his bitch ass. Ain't no fucking way in hell that this nigga gonna kill my mama, and I'm gonna have my family relatives around him, or even speculation allegations like that, nigga. We gotta sit on Oprah couch to talk about this. Shit, at least we need to change the public perception. P. Diddy ain't sit down and ha ain't show no remorse to Kim or anything. 
That fuck nigga sat up there and praised that white woman that's been his handler for 10 years, since 2013, and the lawsuit was filed in 2023. Guess what? That was within the 10-year statute of limitation for RICO. They only need that woman and prove that you done took corporate money and money from them entities to pay Brandon, that white boy that got caught up in Florida for that goddamn pink cocaine and shit, and young Miami with the bad BBL bodies. Them hoes look like they body hurt. Child, please. They, they, the BBL is the new high heel. You know, motherfucker put the high heel on, got to break them in. They got a permanent high heel on their body. Before they can even heal, they get some more surgery. Just look at Cat Cardi B. She's starting to look like the cat woman more and more every day. 